United States, Senator J.D. Vance. Why don't we liberate these United States? We're the ones who need it worse. Let the rest of the world help us for change And let's rebuild the very first Our highways and bridges are falling apart Who's blessed and who has been cursed? There's things to be done all over the world But let's rebuild the very wow. first Wow! Thank you. All right, my friends, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it is great to be in Atlanta. Hello, Georgia. In 93 days, we're going to take back our country and elect Donald J. Trump once again. It's going to start right here in Georgia. Now, let's recap the last month in political history. We have to remember, just over a month ago, President Trump wiped the floor with Joe Biden on that debate stage, exposing a massive cover-up. Of the president's mental incapacity, he saved America from four more years of the disaster of Joe Biden. And during that same time, Donald Trump accepted our own party's nomination with overwhelming support. We held the most successful convention in history. He took a bullet for this country and didn't miss a single day of work. Now, he did that in one month. Just imagine what he's going to do with four more years, ain't that right? Now, after covering up Joe Biden's incompetence for the last three and a half years, our friends in the media are at it again. This time, they're gaslighting us on Kamala Harris's radical record. They want to portray her as some kind of sensible moderate, despite all evidence to the contrary. Now, this is the same media that told us, remember, my friends, for three and a half years that Joe Biden, who couldn't complete a sentence, was Albert Einstein. And now they want to tell us that Kamala Harris is Abraham Lincoln. But anybody who is too blind to see Biden's incompetence, or let's be honest, too dishonest to admit it, doesn't deserve to be commander-in-chief. Kamala Harris is not getting a promotion to the presidency of the United States. Now, the Democrat Party bosses would like to install her as their new nominee and as the next president, but remember, she has not received a single vote for president. Let, let's actually give Democrat primary voters some credit because in their primary in 2020, Kamala Harris was so unpopular, she didn't even make it to the first vote being cast. She wasn't in the top three in her home state of California. And the reason is Democrat voters know what every American agrees with, America is never gonna elect a San Francisco liberal who's so far outside the mainstream, we're not gonna elect Kamala Harris as president. Now let us count the ways of the disastrous policies of Kamala Harris. 500,000 kids, I was at the border just a couple of days ago. 500,000 kids have been trafficked by the drug cartels because of her policy. She was the border czar, the media lies to you, but she was. Hardworking Americans cannot afford groceries because of her policies. 
gas and energy are through the roof because of her policies. Housing prices are out of control because of her policies. You cannot let in 20 million illegal aliens to compete with Americans for scarce housing and then raise interest rates, which is exactly what Kamala Harris has done. And people right here in Georgia and all across the country have suffered because of it. Now, the media calls her a moderate, but there's nothing the fake news loves more than a fact check. So let's do a fact check. Kamala Harris was the most liberal United States senator during her entire time in public service. As America's borders are, Kamala Harris unleashed the worst border crisis in American history. Ten million illegal aliens have invaded this country. The total, that's what they say, that's the official number, it's probably more than that. Biden-Harris, on day one, they suspended deportations. They stopped building the border wall. I saw it just a couple days ago. It's sitting there on the ground, ready to be finished, but Kamala Harris won't let them. They... They reinstated catch and release, then they proposed, they proposed amnesty for millions of illegal aliens. Kamala Harris turned Border Patrol into a travel agency for the worst criminals and terrorists all over the world. Now we have a different message, President Trump and I do. If you're in this country illegally, start packing your bags, you go home in six months. We're not done yet. The border isn't the only thing Kamala Harris has wrecked during her time in office. In 2021, she was the tie-breaking vote on $2 trillion of reckless spending that juiced this inflation crisis and sent a lot of money to China. Well, I don't think we should send money to China. I think we ought to keep it right here at home. Remember the Inflation Reduction Act, which was really the Inflation is a Disaster Act. She cast the deciding vote, triggered the worst affordability crisis in generations. And, and at the same time, she said that high gas prices were, quote, the price to pay for democracy. A woman who's never earned a vote for President of the United States. That's the price for democracy. Well, it's not the price for democracy, my friends, it's the price we paid for her failed leadership. Now, Harris wants to ban fracking, ban offshore drilling, take away your gas cars, and by the way, I think in America, you ought to be able to drive whatever the hell you want to, because this is America, and we believe in freedom. She wants to take away your gas stoves. She even wants to take away your ability to eat red meat. That's how out there she is. That's real. The fake news will fact check it. They'll fact check it true. She actually said that. In other words, she thinks that she's better than us. She thinks she's better than you. She thinks she's smarter than you. She thinks you need to be told how to live your life but this November, let's tell the Washington elites, let's tell Kamala Harris, mind your own damn business, we're electing Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Every time the Democrats attack us and attack our movement, they can't help but tell on themselves they reveal how much they hate the American people. Now remember this. Remember Barack Obama said we cling to God and guns. Remember that? Hillary Clinton called us deplorables. 
And now, Kamala Harris says we're weird. Well, Kamala, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Let's talk about some things that are weird. We, we think it's weird that Democrats want to put sexually explicit books in toddlers' libraries. We think it's weird that the far left wants to allow biological males to beat the living crap out of women in boxing. We think it's weird for a presidential candidate to bail convicted rapists and murderers out of prison, and that's what Kamala Harris did. And, and I think it's especially weird when Kamala Harris comes to Atlanta, I believe came here to this, this, this arena, Kamala Harris comes to Atlanta and talks with a fake Southern accent, even though she grew up in Canada, you can't make it up, that's pretty weird. Go watch the clip, she sounded like a Southern Belle, even though she grew up in Vancouver. It doesn't make any sense. But on November 5th, she can go back to using her San Francisco accent because we're gonna send her packing and we're gonna reelect Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Now, we can handle the made-up attacks by Democrats and by the media because we're used to it by now. But here's something I can't stomach about Kamala Harris. It's when she has the nerve to question our loyalty to this country. And she does. Well, here's what President Trump and I believe about loyalty. Loyalty to this country is closing our border, not opening it up. Loyalty is making life more affordable, not causing inflation because you can't stop sending money like a drunken sailor. <laughs> Loyalty is safeguarding Medicare for American citizens, not bankrupting it by sending it to illegal aliens, which is what she wants to do. <laughs> Loyalty is protecting Lake and Riley, not allowing an illegal immigrant to take her life. Loyalty is serving in the United States Marine Corps, something I am proud to have done. <laughs> Loyalty is taking a bullet for this country, something Donald J. Trump did. Kamala Harris, if you want to see the face of disloyalty, look in the damn mirror. Now, for decades, we've gotten used to it. Politicians in Washington have sold out this country. We've got to remember when the multinational corporations and the lobbyists called their offices, a lot of them traded American jobs for campaign cash. Now, they'd never admit that, of course. They'd brag about trade deals and they'd promise cheap products. They called it globalization, and that's what it was, sending American jobs to some other part of the globe instead of keeping them right here at home. And if it's up, my friends, if it's up to Kamala Harris, it's going to keep on happening. Let's remember her record. She voted to preserve NAFTA, the very trade deal that sent American jobs to Mexico and turned American dreams into nightmares. Now, she's asking us for a promotion, and I think it's time to say to Kamala Harris, you're fired. The American dream, the American dream is dying under Kamala Harris. But we're gonna save it. We're gonna save it for every American, regardless of color or creed, and we're gonna do it when we reelect Donald J. Trump, President of the United States.
That's why we got to do it. You know, President Trump knows a few things that the Washington politicians forgot. He knows that a million cheap plastic toys from China is not worth a single American manufacturing job. We're going to rebuild American manufacturing. We're going to rebuild the factories. We're going to rebuild the American dream. And we're going to stamp more products made in the USA. It's a beautiful thing. And that's what we're going to do. Now, I've seen the consequences of electing failed politicians like Kamala Harris. I've seen it in my own hometown, because more often than not, it's the people the Bible calls the least of these that suffer the most when Kamala Harris doesn't do her job. They like to say they're for the little guy, but it's the little guy who hurts the most when Kamala Harris fails. Now, a lot of you know my story. You know how I grew up. I was raised by a strong woman, a Christian grandmother who loved the Lord, but also love the F word, ladies and gentlemen. She was a, a study in contrast. I think there are a few out here just like it. Now, now people ask me, how is it that you were able to grow up in a poor family, grow up in a family that was struggling, had a lot of chaos and a lot of trouble? And the answer is because one, this is the greatest country in the world and the American dream is still possible. The second answer is because I had a mammal who was tough as nails, and she kept me on the right path. Now, I could tell you a lot of stories. I could tell you a lot of stories. Well, one of my favorite mammal stories is when I enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps, she was very proud of me, of course, but it was, it was a time of war, and Mamaw was not happy that a recruiter had persuaded me to enlist in the Marines. So I remember he came over to our house and started to walk up the steps to her porch, and she said, look, if you step one more foot on my porch, I'm going to blow that thing off. And she had 19 handguns at home, so that was not an idle threat. But that strength and that discipline allowed me to achieve my dreams and things worked out for me because we love our country, it's a great country, and because there are women like Mamaw all over this country making sure kids are able to achieve their dreams. Thank you. But let's be honest, there were some tough times too. And this goes to the point about Kamala Harris's failures. I remember the reason Mamaw raised me is because my mom struggled with addiction for a big chunk of my early life. And I, I'm proud to say that she has been clean and sober for almost 10 years now. I'm so proud of my mom. Thank you. And, and for all those struggling with this terrible problem of addiction, no, there is hope and there is recovery. It's worth it. You got to keep fighting for it. But we support you and we support your dreams for second chances. But it wasn't always that good. Didn't always think that I would get a second chance with my mom. I remember being a kid waiting at the bedside of my mom, angry that she had taken something she shouldn't have taken, and just praying to God, even though I was so mad, praying to God, please, Jesus, just let her wake up. Don't let this thing be the thing that took her life. And the unfortunate truth, my friends, is that the poison that Kamala Harris has let into this country means there are a lot of kids like me who are not going to have those prayers answered. We're going, to be, we're going to remember who we're fighting for, and it's the kids at the side of those bedside tables begging God for their parents to wake up. We're going to make sure that happens. We're going to fight for the people who are struggling in this country. And, and, and the contrast, the contrast between an America led by Kamala Harris and an America led by President Trump, it couldn't be more clear. Remember, President Trump's vision was closed borders and open factories. Kamala Harris's vision is the exact opposite. 
open borders and close factories. Kamala Harris, she wants bigger government that can tell you what to do, and she also wants smaller bank accounts, which I think a lot of us have seen. But Donald Trump, by contrast, delivered record paychecks and the strongest border in history. What an amazing record of accomplishment. Kamala Harris wants to ban fracking and buy energy from every tin pot dictator all over the world. Donald Trump wants to drill, baby, drill. Let's get it from our own workers and our own territory. Kamala Harris wants to raise your taxes, and she wants to make it easier for companies to ship jobs to Mexico and China. Donald Trump wants to lower taxes for hardworking families. In fact, he already did it, and we want to reward companies that hire American and buy American. It's all about protecting the workers of this country. Kamala Harris wants to defund the police and let violent criminals out of jail. Donald Trump wants to lock up the bad guys and back the blue, and he did it for four years. He's going to do it again. So I, I want to send a message out there to those who are struggling, those who are trying to make ends meet. If you're scraping by instead of thriving, I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to choose between paying off the credit card or buying groceries. I know what it's like to watch families fall apart under financial stress. I know what it's like to worry that a parent will never kick that habit, and I know what it's like to worry that that habit is gonna eventually claim their lives. But I also know that our national motto is in God we trust, and God tells us not to despair, but to hope, hope. And while the media likes to lie about this movement and this party, this movement of ours is about a simple idea. We love this country enough that we will never give up hope and we will never stop fighting for a better future for everybody. Whether they vote for us or not, if you're an American citizen, we love you and we're going to fight for you. Now we know that in this election, the best way to give our people hope for the future is to re-elect the guy who already did it and did it very well, Donald J. Trump, the once and future president of the United States. In just a few months, I believe, this state of Georgia is going to lead a great American restoration, a restoration of safety, of prosperity, and yes, of hope. We're going to secure our borders. We're going to kick out the drugs and the illegal immigrants. We're going to rebuild American manufacturing. We're going to bring jobs back to this country, and we are going to buy American for American for our people. It's going to start in Georgia. God bless you all. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to be your next vice president, and we're going to win Georgia and win this country. I love you all. Thank you so much for having me. Build America first. 